Good evening. My name is Brandon Townsend, and coming up in the next half hour, Governor, Alaska's governor gets sued by the ACLU. Lawyers are arguing over the legitimacy of this case. Smokers have been said to have a higher risk of depression, and Julian Castro might be ending his presidential campaign soon. These and much more, including your Storm Team weather forecast, coming up. News 99 starts right now. I'm Sarah Burns. You know, actually, I think that this week we've had some pretty decent weather. Yeah, I mean, just like my GPA, the weather has also dropped. So. I mean, but I like the cold, though, so. Oh, I love cold weather. It's yeah. the only time that, like, I can walk around in and nice clothes and I, not sweat. I think we're getting snow on Monday. Tuesday. Tuesday? It's very okay. important. It's been changing, but it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to Sean to find out more. Well, hopefully Brandon's grades can rise higher as the, we get closer to the end of the semester. But as we look at the, the right now, it is 52 degrees, it is clear but cool, a normal high of 65, a wind direction that is south, and a wind speed of two miles per hour. And right now in, in the southern Pennsylvania, it is 53 in Lebanon, 53 Reading, 52 in Lancaster, 54 in York, and 55 in Harrisburg. It's cold throughout the entire area right now. And in short-term outlook, tonight is gonna be nice and cool. Tomorrow, it'll be showers all day. Friday, sunny but cool. And tonight, the cool low temperature of 39 degrees. Thursday, like I said, it's gonna rain all day with a high of 54, and it'll rain continue into the night with a low of 30 degrees. Back at you guys at the desk. Thanks, Sean. We'll have more weather updates later in the program, but now let's jump into what's happening on the Millersville campus. Millersville University prides itself on being an eco-friendly, sustainable campus. The Lombardo Welcome Center, an award-winning building that processes more energy than it uses, is a prime example of Millersville leading the way in sustainability. Due to changes in the recycling industry, Millersville can only accept recycling from four types of items. The big four, corrugated cardboard, plastic bottles and jugs with necks, metal food and beverage cans, and glass jars and bottles. Because the Lombardo Welcome Center is energy efficient, the university can apply for a rebate. The money gained through Lombardo and other energy efficient rebates were put into a fund and dispersed to students in microgrants for projects that support global goals for sustainable development. Deadlines to apply for funds from the Positive Energy Fund will come up in the spring semester. Millersville University will join a nationwide movement to celebrate the first generation of college faculty students, alumni, and staff. The brief will start uh, on Friday, November 2nd and run until Friday, November 8th. The inaugural participation will include activities such as a wellness events, breakfast, and a Tri Alpha celebration. Uh, th this week we'll also introduce a new honor society for the first generation of students on campus. Um, Thursday evening there will be a Tri Alpha One celebration uh, introducing the Alpha 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 chapter to our uh, campus. Tri Alpha is an honor society that recognizes the academic achievements of first-generation college students who come from a family where neither parent nor legal guardian has earned a bachelor degree. Did you know that new content is coming to MUTV? Starting in the next couple of weeks, two new shows will be joining the MUTV weekly lineup. First, The People with Michael McDonald, a political roundtable discussion panel. That show is tentatively airing Wednesdays after News 99. The second is Plugged In, a geek news and culture show tentatively airing Thursday after Hollywood headlines. We hope you tune in, tell us what you think, and bear with us as we make this transition. From all of us here at the station, thank you for watching. In local headlines, 
Michael Kaufman of Litz has been accused of sexually and physically abusing juvenile victims at multiple locations in Southampton, Shippensburg, and Hopewell Township. State police say the incidents occurred between January 2011 and January 2017. He has several charges, including rape of a child, sexual assault, endangering the welfare of a child, simple assault, and harassment. He is currently being held in Cumberland County Prison in lieu of a $250,000 cash bail. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for November 18th. An effort of man, Michael T. Matthews, will serve 9 to 27 years in prison for felony aggravated arson regarding an incident that took place in May of 2018. When the police arrived at the home on the day of the fire, Matthews was at the front door and went inside and locked the door. Judge Margaret Miller said Matthews placed people in significant danger when he set fire to the home, then hid out in a closet enforcing first responders to rescue him. Police say a female was also home when Matthews set it ablaze, but she escaped on her own. Detective Lockhart Field changes which included aggravated arson, arson and risking a catastrophe. Anna Kennedy says statistics show 26% of children are struggling with some kind of mental illness. Kennedy, the executive director of Lancaster Orthopedic Health Foundation, said that there are means to be several hundred children in Lancaster dealing with issues like depression, anxiety, and stress. The foundation announced that last Wednesday that it has awarded nearly $50,000 in grants to four organizations that help with mental health services for children. Most money awarded Wednesday will go to the Milagro House, which helps women and children. The Pennsylvania Turnpike says it plans to move ahead with a $129 million project in the next two years. Turnpike Chief Executive Officer Mark Compton said the goal is to have the system completely cashless by the fall of 2021. The system won't take cash after that point, but toll booths will still be at some exit ramps across the Commonwealth until 2026 to record easy pass signals or photograph license plates so bills can be mailed to drivers. That will continue until the agency finishes up installing 43 overheard grant trees in three phases over the next six years. With the system completely cashless, Turnpike employment is expected to drop. Compton says jobs cannot be guaranteed after January of 2022, but for several years, workers whose jobs will be eliminated have been eligible for up to $5,000 a year in tuition credits to take classes to learn other Turnpike or state jobs or to study for a new career. That's all we have for now, but we come back. It's your latest national headlines. Stay tuned. News 99 will be right back. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. When I was in high school, I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home, and that's hard when you feel like you're doing it alone. That's when I met our niece, my mom, as I call her. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but your future is more important. She's my strength. Just being that support for those hard days and those hard nights is not giving up on me. Thank you to my mama. I wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for her. Today is for my mama and everybody who had my back. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. Some people would think, well, maybe it's really not that big of a deal, but it really is. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. Why are you talking to me? Lame. Loser. Weirdo. 
I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment. And consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. Welcome back. In national headlines, a new study shows people who smoke tobacco may be at risk of developing depression at a higher rate and schizophrenia. A new study shows people who smoke tobacco may be at a higher risk of developing depression and schizophrenia. A team of researchers from the University of Bristol in the UK says their findings are a part of a growing evidence that smoking can negatively impact mental health. The researchers used genetic data to examine cause and effect relationships with smoking. The team recommends that psychiatric hospitals be made smoke-free to avoid detrimental effects on mental health. The full study was published Wednesday in the journal Psychology Medicine. A suspect has been arrested in Monday's massacre of a family from a Mormon community in Mexico. The biggest question behind the attack was the family targeted or caught in the crossfire of a drug cartel turf war. Nadia Romero is in Tucson, Arizona, where five of the children who survived are being treated. None of my grandchildren made it out. They burnt to a crisp. And my daughter-in-law. A day after members of a Mormon family were gunned down in Mexico, authorities there say they have made an arrest. The attorney general for the neighboring state of Chihuahua didn't disclose what the suspect's involvement might have been, but says a newly formed drug cartel could be behind the massacre. October of this year was the hot, most violent month in modern Mexican history also, which means the level is rising, it's not descending. The murder of three mothers and six children is just the latest horror in a region known for cartel violence. The group was traveling in a caravan near their family's ranch just south of the U.S. border when their vehicles were riddled with gunfire, one catching fire. Several children managed to escape, hiding in the bushes for hours. The 13-year-old boy was able to reach the community after being lost, is what everybody was saying, for several hours, and he let everybody know where the other five children were. All five of them were injured. Those children are being treated at Arizona hospitals as the family grapples with what's next. November 9th will mark the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. The wall enclosed West Berlin from 1961 to 1989 in an attempt to prevent East Germans from fleeing to the West. It became a symbol of East-West relations during the Cold War. The wall began as a border of a barbed wire fencing and evolved into a fortified concrete barrier with armed East German border guards. The wall between East and West Berlin was nearly 12 feet high and approximately 27 miles long. With 302 guard towers and the 55,000 anti-personnel explosive devices, to prevent attempts to scale the wall, or escape by digging underneath. The wall was reinforced with barbed wire, spikes, metal gratings, bunkers, and vehicles made into obstacles. Alaska's governor gets sued by the ACLU, and now a Superior Court judge in Anchorage has to determine if a case that looks into the legitimacy of one of his vetoes should go on. Sean Maguire reports. The case hinges on Governor Mike Dunleavy's decision to veto $334,000 from the Alaska court system. A veto he says was because the courts have ruled the state should fund elective abortions. The executive doesn't believe we should be funding abortions and the people of Alaska don't feel we should be funding abortions. So that was the purpose of the veto. In response, the American Civil Liberties Union of Alaska sued. Stunning and blatant act of retaliation against a court. Arguing that the veto is unconstitutional and that it threatens the people's faith in the independence of the courts and that the debate strikes at a woman's right to choose. How can it be argued that that is not a matter of public significance? Attorneys for the state of Alaska disagree, filing a motion to dismiss the case, arguing that the courts remain independent. The judiciary remains independent and is adequately, adequately funded. That the governor can veto funding as he chooses and that the court system should avoid politics. The governor and the state would ask you to exercise judicial restraint and 
not jump into the political fray. Outside the courthouse, protesters against the governor's decision to cut funding to the courts. So this governor has never been, had any shame about his extreme position on safe legal, legal abortion. Um, but the fact that he cut the state court system's budget purely because they uphold the law and the state's constitution is frankly spiteful even for him. While some protested abortions and others supported the governor's decision. This does not stop free and safe legal abortions in the state of Alaska. We just don't feel that as we the citizens of Alaska and the government should pay for it. So those are our two issues. We don't feel like we should pay for it and we support our governor in the fact that he has a right to veto something and uh, uh, because that's what our Constitution says, that he has that authority. Judge Jennifer Henderson, though, will need to decide whether that is the case. This case is political, and, and that's the problem with it, and that's that's why the court should refrain and 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 allow this to, to play out um, in the political spectrum. And whether it is appropriate for her to make a decision at all. We respectfully ask you to deny the motion, Your Honor, and let this case proceed to judgment. Judge Henderson said she would be considering the oral arguments closely and providing a written decision. No word yet on when that would be. Democratic presidential candidate Julian Castro is doing all he can to keep his campaign alive. The former Secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development just announced staffers in two states will be laid off. The employees in New Hampshire and South Carolina we're told the final day would be next week. The campaign says it's uh, hoping to focus its attention on Iowa and his home state of Texas. Castro has struggled in the polls and with fundraising, but he's qualified for all the past debates. Last month, he said if he did not hit 800,000 800, me, donations in over the last 10 days of October, he would drop out of the race. The campaign met that goal. They're now hoping to meet with the threshold for the November date. That's all we have for uh, national headlines. Sean, what's the weather looking like tonight? Well, right now it is cool and clear, as you see, with the cool low 39. And then tomorrow it's going to start getting rainy. So when we come back after this commercial break, we'll have your full length weather forecast. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. When I was in high school, I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home, and that's hard when you feel like you're doing it alone. That's when I met our niece, my mom, as I call her. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but your future is more important. She's my strength. Just being a support for those hard days and those hard nights is not giving up on me. Thank you to my mama. I wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for her. Today is for my mama and everybody who had my back. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. Some people would think, well, maybe it's really not that big of a deal, but it really is. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. Why are you talking to me? Lame. Loser. Weirdo. 
I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment. And consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. All right, now that it's uh, cold outside, what is your opinion on putting up decorations? Ooh, very controversial, I see. Yeah. Um, I am a big fan of Thanksgiving, but honestly, I couldn't wait any longer to get Christmas really? around. Yeah, you I'm, I'm team pro Christmas after though, Halloween. Brandon. It is very cold outside, so. Okay, but Thanksgiving. Baby, it is. I am a very big fan of seeing Mariah Carey on New Year's Eve really really do her thing okay, about but christmas that's songs New Year's Eve. you know what let's go New to sean to find out more <laughs> well in my opinion i think the, it should be we should be celebrating thanksgiving first then christmas but anyway on with our weather forecast tonight is course it's gonna be cool low of 39 then it's gonna start raining all of thursday with a high of 54 and it's gonna still rain to the night with a low of 30. And then moving on today, right now, with the high temperatures, it's Lancaster, it's 52 degrees, 53 in Reading, 53 Lebanon, 54 in York, 55 in Harrisburg. Overall, it is very cool outside right now. Not too cool. Overnight, our lows are gonna be 39 in Lancaster, 39 in Reading, and it's gonna be 39 throughout southeastern Pennsylvania. Our satellite imagery right now, we have clouds forming right now over the Ohio River Valley and will be coming over towards our way, which will bring in the rain that we'll get on Tuesday, on Thursday. On Thursday, we will have, of course, our showers with a high of 55. And then Friday, it will be clear up. It will be 43 degrees, though, real cold. Then Saturday, it's going to be 45 degrees and sunny, and it should be clear. Moving on to our seven day forecast. Sunday, it's gonna be 56 degrees and we'll be warming up just a little bit. Monday, it'll be cold, 54 degrees, more of the same. Tuesday is gonna be 38 degrees and yes, you're, not, you're seeing that right, it's gonna possibly snow that day. And then Wednesday, it'll be 36 degrees, even colder and it'll be sunny again. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Sean. When we return, we'll have what's going on in the world of politics. Stay tuned. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. When I was in high school, I was physically at school, but my mind wasn't at school. I had problems at home, and that's hard when you feel like you're doing it alone. That's when I met our niece, my mom, as I call her. She started helping me a little bit, like, Nia, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but your future is more important. She's my strength. Just being a support for those hard days and those hard nights is not giving up on me. Thank you to my mama. I wouldn't have did this if it wasn't for her. Today is for my mama and everybody who have my back. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. Some people would think, well, maybe it's really not that big of a deal, but it really is. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. You can't sit here. Don't add her to the chain. It was just a joke. Why are you talking to me? Lame. Loser. Weirdo. 
I've said and done things before that I'm not proud of. Just as I've been hurt by others. The thing is, this, this is not who I am. And it's definitely not who I want to be. I don't want to be cruel. I don't want to spread gossip. I don't want to be a body shamer. We have the power to be more. We can create a kinder world. It's not that hard. We just need to stop. Take a moment. And consider others before we speak. And before we act. Be more. Be more. Be more. Welcome back to News 99. In celebration of his brand new show, Michael McDonald is here to discuss the world of politics. Mike, congrats on the new program and take it away. Thank you guys. So yesterday was an off election day all across the country. Although most of these elections focused on local government, we saw a few states that focused on their state legislatures and governor seats. Kentucky, Virginia, and Mississippi were the heavy hitters for this election because of that reason. Starting off with Kentucky, we saw the fight for governor ensue between the Democratic Attorney General, Andy Bush Heard, and the current Republican governor of the state, Matt Beaven. To most, to most surprise, the Dem Andy Bush Heard won the seat, which is a crucial win for the Democrats in a primarily red state. Moving back to Virginia, we saw a blue wave take over the state. The Virginia State House yesterday became majority blue in both the House and the Senate. This will now give the current governor of Virginia, Ralph Nordenham, who is also a Dem, to pass new laws on gun control and increase the minimum wage with much ease. Finally, Mississippi will see yet another Republican governor enter its halls in the former Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves. Reeves will be replacing his successor of Governor Phil Bryan. But the takeaways from this election shows that the Democrats are on an upswing in states that Trump won in the 2016 election, along with the 2018 midterm election. With the 2020 presidential election in less than a year, will we see these states go blue again, bringing an end to one of the most controversial presidencies of the 21st century? We'll just have to wait and see in the coming year. Back to you guys. And that's all we have for tonight's episode, folks. I'm Brandon Townsend. And I'm Sarah Burns. Have a great night, Millersville.